What project should you work on? It's easy to obsess with this question and try to find the perfect project, the Goldilocks project, if you will, a perfect balance of difficulty with impressiveness, a balance between ambition and feasibility, a project just hard and unique enough to actually learn something new and potentially impress some hiring manager while still being simple enough to actually potentially finish it. But does this project even exist? And if so, how do you find it? Because you're your Goldilocks project is probably different from mine. So in this video, I want to give you sort of a framework that I use to actually decide what projects to work on. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better, more concrete idea of what you should be working on. To start, try to just identify what your own goals are. So are you just trying to build a project for your resume to potentially get a job? Which by the way, no shame in that. Or potentially, are you trying to actually learn some specific skill set? Or maybe you're just trying to make some money by by actually releasing this project out into the world. Or maybe it's some mix of a few of these or some other goal that you might have. Next, you need to assess your own skill level and just how much time you actually have to commit to this project. The biggest reasons that projects get abandoned are when there's too much technical complexity or when there's just too much scope and not enough time to actually finish it. So it's important to just be realistic with yourself and recognize where you're at from a skill level perspective and how much time you have to commit to this and realize that you're not going to be perfectly efficient. Take whatever you expect to be the best case scenario for how long something's going to take and honestly just double it because actually predicting how long something's going to take is extremely difficult. Now if your goal involves actually landing a job then it's important to understand what exactly makes a good resume project because surprisingly it's probably not what you'd expect. The biggest thing by far in my opinion is just having a project that's easily understood. Having a project that you can easily describe to a recruiter or a hiring manager in one single sentence on your resume because I know you probably have some great github readme and all of these things but the reality is recruiters are unlikely to look at any of those things they're just going to look at your resume and they're going to be skimming it very quickly and if in that quick skim they don't understand what the project is it's going to greatly devalue that project the next big criteria point I'd say is uniqueness yes tutorials are great but tutorial projects on your resume not so great because ultimately these projects just aren't unique tons of people do these projects and thus tons of them end up on resumes and recruiters and hiring managers see these projects all the time and thus aren't impressed in the slightest. Now, don't get me wrong, you can use a tutorial as a great starting place for an incredible project and then make very significant and meaningful changes to them and then use that on your resume, but just don't use peer tutorial projects because they've seen them a million times. Another important criteria point is just the tech stack. Now, you don't need to use a specific tech stack, work with whatever is best for the projects you're working on. That said, it can be good if you're applying to certain companies to use a similar tech stack as those companies use to showcase that you are already skilled in the things you're going to be doing on that job. Additionally, you can also think about these specific roles you're applying to, whether it be front end, back end, full stack, or something else, and think about what are the common tech stacks being used in those jobs and try to emphasize those pieces of technology in your own projects to sort of craft this story on your resume, showing that you were focused in on this specific area that the job is that you're actually applying to. And the final criteria point is what I would call an X factor. These are things that just help you stand out. Things that just sound impressive. For example, this can be something like building up a legitimate user base using your project. Alternatively, it can be just going above and beyond in uniqueness or in usefulness of that project or even in technical complexity. Although do be careful with the technical complexity one just because it's oftentimes very difficult for a recruiter or a hiring manager to actually gauge how technically complex something actually was. And of course, if landing a job isn't part of your goals, then don't worry too much about this criteria. For example, example, if your goal is just to learn something new, like learning Rust, then just go find a project you can do that uses Rust. You don't need to overthink too much about what exactly that project is actually going to be. But for most of us, I would assume the goals probably include trying to land a new job. Okay, so I know what you're probably thinking. I still don't know what project to make. And now I need to find some project with this mysterious X factor thing. It feels almost harder than it was before watching this video. How has this been helpful at all? So what I want to do is try to give you 
give you some more concrete areas of projects that you can work on that I think can help you really stand out. Now, by no means is this going to be some exhaustive list, but hopefully it helps you find a good starting place. First an idea is to try building some Internet of Things device. So for example, try building some home automation device using a Raspberry Pi with some custom software. And if you want to be extra trendy, you can even try integrating it with some kind of AI. And that brings us to another idea, which is to try to do something with all of these public AI APIs, such as the GPT API. Tons of startups right now are doing this, which means by doing this in your projects, you are showcasing that you are able to do the thing that they are actually doing on the job, which can be a good thing. Additionally, using these AI APIs just allows you to build things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to build. Things that are far more impressive sounding, even if they don't actually add that much technical complexity because the API handles a lot of it. And in the realm of things with less technical complexity than you'd actually expect is that you can try building a game or an app for AR or VR. And now this does sound very difficult, but using a tool like Unity, it's actually not as complex as you might expect it to be. Additionally, this is just an area that I think you can both be very unique as well as potentially actually develop a legitimate user base because VR is currently sort of in this place where there's a lot of actual users. There's a lot of people who have VR headsets, but not that many apps for it. It's very similar to the early days of iOS when there were a lot of iPhone users, but not very many iOS apps. Now, if you do want something a bit simpler with less complexity to it, another idea would be to build some kind of data visualization project using a framework like D3. These are great because they're typically very easy to be quickly understood, as well as you can add a ton of uniqueness just in the idea itself without adding too much technical complexity to it. But now with all of that said, there's one key to building successful projects that so many people overlook. And no, it's not about the tech stack or anything like that. It's simply about building something that genuinely interests you. If you do this, this will be a project that you are actually passionate about, something you actually want to be building. And because of this, you'll be far less likely to abandon that project. Additionally, when you get into that interview, you'll be able to passionately talk about the project because you actually cared about it when you were building it. So don't stress too much about the project specifics, but hopefully this video helped you get started, which is the most important step. Now, if you are looking for other ways you can make money coding, you should watch this video next.